Hello, I'm Adam. I'm Adrian. And welcome to Cast from the Crypt. Adrian, what are we talking about? Troll! Yeah, say it. <laughs> say it again. Troll! Troll. Oh, wow. Um, 2022 film. 2022, directed by Ror Uthaug. What a name. I may have butchered the pronunciation. But, yeah. Nordic Godzilla is probably the best way to describe this movie. Uh, That's it's, basically how it was marketed. Yeah, I mean, that's basically what it is, kind of. It's a little less intense. It's a pretty um, low-stakes movie, for sure, is, is a good way to describe <laughs> it. Uh, uh, well, you know, Godzilla's in Tokyo. There's cities, Pacific Rim, King Kong, all those, They're you know, great American cities to tear through. Uh, here you have villages. <laughs> The stakes are innately lower. Yeah, there isn't much city destruction, considering. This is a pretty, like, well-mannered troll, I guess. Um, we, of course, both of us have seen and talked about in other forms of life the wonderful found footage film, but it's called Troll Hunter. It's also a Norwegian yes. film, and we love that movie. It's also, like... Uh, pretty popular on Netflix right now. Uh, cause it yeah, it was number out. one. It was number one in movies. Yeah, I don't know if that's like... I don't know if that says much, though, because I feel like anything's no. number one. Twilight New Moon was number one for a second there. Yeah, I think it's just like most streamed that day. Yeah, well, and it was like the day it released, too, wasn't it? So I think, right. you know, it's freshly out, right. though. Uh, you know, and it's winter, so why not, um, you know, kind of connect with the... The Northern Lands, although it looks like this might have taken place at least in the summertime. Maybe it was filmed in the summertime, because I know it's, like, pretty cold up in Norway, and uh, it looks... There's no snow. It looks pretty warm in this film. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're not really bundled up here. As you'd expect, uh, I think I think you're right. It's probably a Norwegian summer. What was your like initial impressions of this movie? Because it was kind of what I thought it would be. I I don't think I knew exactly what to expect here. Um, you know, I I read into the movie shortly after you know you had suggested we watch it, and that's when I saw that it is very much you know inspired by kaiju films and then it sort of made sense to me but i don't know and with the title troll and knowing that it's norwegian i actually didn't expect a i i guess you could say a kaiju take on this creature because i know that trolls are, are pretty important to norway as far as like folklore goes I definitely thought I'd get something more interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's run of the mill for it sure. Really <laughs> it really is, yeah. Um, which is disappointing because it's already like just the creature that you're working with is already so much more interesting than half the generic monster movies that we get. And instead, it's like this movie is no better than Rampage with The Rock. Yeah, yeah, it's it's rampage adjacent. Um, yeah, it is. It is, which I, is unfortunate. It's probably like from a Norwegian perspective, it's fun to see a Norwegian movie about Norwegian folklore and culture, especially one that's like so, like prolific, so spread out. Like everyone in the world sees that this is on Netflix. You know, it's not completely isolated to just Norway, uh, but. It's just a normal monster, like, big monster kaiju movie with the skin, <laughs> the texture of a Norwegian influence. Yeah. It's just dressed up like a Norwegian troll, basically. No, you're 100% right. Um, I know that this director, Uthaug, he is not a stranger to the generic run-of-the-mill action movie formula. In fact, he directed, I don't know if you, you saw this, but he directed 
the Tomb Raider reboot. So not the one with Angelina Jolie from back in the day, but the 2018 one with uh, Alicia Vikander. Well, that's that's not really <laughs> to his credit. No, not at all, right? But it makes sense. Like yeah. seeing seeing this project come right after that one, it, it all makes sense to me. And I'm not familiar with any of the things that he made before that, but he's had a fairly long career. He's been working and directing since 96, so he's been around. I don't one of the things that, you know, I saw this movie, I thought it looked a little I don't know. It was I was not feeling a part of the demographic this appeals to, you know. I was kind of like meh. I don't know if it looks interesting enough to watch, but I looked it up on a just on Google and like tried to get some reviews and everything and like it seemed like yeah, like on Letterboxd it was pretty like okay. You know, doing okay. It was kind of average. But uh, out of all the reviews I saw on the various platforms, for whatever reason, on Rotten Tomatoes, it had, like, a really high review. Yeah, right here I have it. It was an 83% on Rotten Tomatoes. And I was like, why? Why so high from just Rotten Tomatoes? Come to find out, the Rotten Tomatoes rating is based on 12 reviews. I, you know, sometimes they have, like, a review board or whatever, and it's not just the right. general public's consensus. And that sometimes skews things dramatically, and I guess that's probably what happened here. Well, and I'll match your your 83% from the 12 reviews. If you go to the audience score, which has 250-plus ratings, it is at a lovely 51%. Yeah, and that is much more accurate. <laughs> I agree. Um, here's the thing. You and I, we I'm sure we crave a movie like this that's a masterpiece. Will it come? Maybe we already got it in 2010 with Troll Hunter. Honestly, that movie rocks. Yeah, Troll and... Hunter to Troll Hunter Rider Die for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That movie is fantastic and it does all the right things where this movie fails. It's got mysticism. It doesn't show more than it needs to at any given point. And then when you finally do see it, it's mesmerizing and shocking that they're actually even showing as much as they are. The found footage medium really helps with that. This movie, I will give them credit in that it is fast paced, right? You, well, it's fast paced at first. You do kind of get your first glimpse of the creature seven to eight minutes in. And then later on, they do show the troll often. And the troll looks cool, I would say. Um, it's just what they do with him and what they do with the characters that feels so generic. And it's a shame because this is not a generic creature. This is not overdone, right? King Kong is overdone. Godzilla is overdone. And they still manage to find a way to make those movies interesting half the time. Why, in a world that severely lacks these sort of folkloric creatures and movies that represent them, are we not getting blockbuster features that do them justice? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it was the wrong guy behind the camera. We are watching this, and I knew we were going to talk about it. I knew... There was no way around the fact that we are going to constantly compare this movie to Troll Hunter. Because, like you said, Troll Hunter does a lot of what this movie does, but way better. This movie has the benefit of modern CGI and a bigger budget, I believe. So it can do a lot more with showcasing the troll. And the troll does look like something from Troll Hunter. You know, it. it, it I feel like they do a good job of making it feel like this goofy fantasy mythological fairy tale creature uh oh look it's real it's in the real world and it doesn't look too out of place too ridiculous uh, i think they do a good job of that in this movie and they do a really good job of that in troll hunter and they're able to show it off a lot more but with a bigger budget than troll hunter i yeah like you said i wish they would have been able to do something more with the story and the characters troll hunter starts off building the mystery really good. Like, we see the troll in this movie, like you said, really, really soon after the film starts. And in Troll Hunter, 
it, it there's a lot of buildup to get to when you finally see a troll. But in that buildup time, we get to understand the characters, their motivations, their relationships, and then they're meeting the troll hunter character who's very mysterious and you're not sure what he does. And then you find out there's trolls, <laughs> of course. And it feels like there's a huge payoff to like, oh, there it is. There's the troll. And here, I don't know, maybe maybe showing it too much kind of detracts from that. The, the seeing the troll, you know, a glimpse of the troll or it kind of shrouded in shadow in Troll Hunter, that made it feel more mysterious. That made the trolls feel uh, more mythological and more mythical. And in this movie, like, there he is. He's just a big old troll standing right there. And eventually... It doesn't feel so far-fetched. But the characters continue to act like it's far-fetched. And yeah. I, I so don't buy into that. Early on, no, I completely agree. Early on in the movie, they establish that the main character, who we meet as a younger girl in the cold open, her name is Nora. Her and her father clearly love folklore, right? The cold open sees them taking a hike, and seeing a mountain rage that he explains to her was created by a bunch of drunk trolls at a troll wedding getting caught in the sunlight and turning to stone. And he makes her look out into the mountains and she sees their faces. And it's this kind of fun moment, this fun reveal where she believes in magic, right? And, and you get a good sense of her and her father's relationship. And after the cold open, we meet her as an adult and she is now an archaeologist, right? Or a paleontologist? Yes, yeah, she's a paleontologist uh, digging up some dinosaur bones. And so she's clearly interested in this kind of work, right? Uncovering things from the past. Um, but she is, I suppose, a skeptic. And <laughs> after the action ensues, which is pretty quick, as I said... And the troll is woken up by a bunch of, I, I think they are miners. Or really yeah, they're digging a, a tunnel operation. through a mountain. Right, right. They're digging a tunnel through a mountain for a military operation. And they awaken the troll that way. And she is one of the first voices to say, uh, well, what you're seeing, leaving the mountain, leaving the scene, are footprints. And all these other scientists, and we can talk about that scene more in depth later, but all these other scientists are laughing at her. And, you know, she's clearly in the know. She realizes that there's no way that this could be anything but some sort of creature. But she'll stop at troll later yeah. on in the movie. Yeah. It drives me insane. Absolutely. It, yes. It's so... I scoffed out loud multiple times at Nora's inability to just be true to the character that we met in the cold open. The actress that plays Nora, her name is Ayn Marie Wilman. I, I hope I'm saying that correctly. She's fine. I don't actually think she did a bad job. I think the script here is really the, the largest issue. There are some really bad performances in this movie. Hers is not one of them. Um, I agree with yeah. that too, yeah. Yeah, I think it's perfectly serviceable, but the, the characters abysmally written yeah so like you said the trolls woken up from this mining operation and it runs out starts causing havoc and there's a bunch of protesters because it's unnatural to dig and there it's like an environmental protest and one of the protesters catches the troll with her iphone camera and the government hacks into her iphone to get the video and so there's a the prime minister and her cabinet and all these professionals are trying to figure out what happened at the Dover Mountain and how they're going to... There's some sort of crisis and they need to deal with it. And that's why they call Nora Tiedemann to come up and help advise. Because maybe... I, I don't quite understand why they needed her. Because she even says at one point, Well, why do you need me? I'm just a paleontologist. And... I think they just say it's a matter of national security and they never elaborate. I, They yeah, didn't no. need her. They really did not need her. I don't 
I also don't understand. They didn't understand. She didn't really need to be there. But yeah, there, there's a lot of artificial conflict between these, like, experts and professionals and leaders. You know, like you said, she calls it a foot and everybody scoffs at her. When, like, it is clearly a giant footprint, a human footprint. And they're like, you know. No marks at all. Yeah, exactly. You can see the toes. Like, every <laughs> couple steps, there's a new one. There's a right one. There's a left one. Like, I, and then they scoff when she says it's a footprint. And, like, <laughs> what else is it then? <laughs> like, and then, yeah, she's like, well, don't call it a troll. That's That's stupid. When... You see it's a troll. They they get that video footage and, and she does this dumb scene where they were like, wait, could you go back? Slow slow down the video. Slow. I, I thought I saw something. You know, that like absolute classic trope and they slow it down and in the chaos you get a the silhouette of a giant man. A giant bipedal humanoid at least. And everybody, you know... <gasps> takes a gasp of breath but then when they call it a troll it's somehow that's absurd like it's a 20 foot man <laughs> like throw everything out the window logic is not applying here there's a giant troll yeah there's there's just so much of that and it's so like artificial there's really no conflict this would never happen and it's ridiculous and it eats up too much of the runtime it does and it doesn't get much better from there so we learn through a lot of expositional dialogue that her father, um, who is, of course, a troll expert, we, we kind <laughs> of learn that early on in the movie, they have a poor relationship now due to his obsession with trolls. And the movie gets into this whole, like, government conspiracy thing where <laughs> the Norwegian government is suppressing her father because he is trying to expose that the Christianizing of Norway did away with all the trolls. And she is still very skeptical of her father and her methods, though she now knows that trolls are real. And it's infuriating. Like when they go to his little trailer, she's acting like he's crazy. Yeah, they find out it is, you know, it's a giant man. Maybe it's a troll, so... They take a helicopter and fly out to his cabin in the mountains. And then he starts, you know, he's crazy troll expert guy. And he starts rambling about how it's probably a troll and trolls are real. And they scoff at him. And it's it's infuriating. And, and the, her father character the whole time is supposed to be like the mad scientist who everybody... Who became a pariah because everybody thought his troll theories were dumb. And then now he's being vindicated. And they still don't believe him. And his whole character is no one believes him. When there is a literal troll, like, in their face. A little bit after this, they literally find the troll. See it with their own eyes, because they're trying to figure out where this creature went. And they find out it actually took can take, like, the form of a mountain and sleep as a giant stone rock during the day. And so the mountain they were standing on actually was the troll. You know, didn't see that coming. But... Then they act like he's crazy or like he isn't an expert or anything when they see the troll. They have like helicopter footage on the news of a giant humanoid with a huge nose and a hairy tail. And he says it's a troll and everybody acts like he's a pariah. And that's like so much of the movie. <laughs> yeah, it is. It informs most of the relationships in the movie. And... I, I don't know what the Norwegian market is, but I think I've got a pretty decent understanding of the American market for this kind of movie. And I don't want expositional BS uh, about, ah, I guess I'll take some government conspiracy mumbo jumbo, but the skepticism, the constant skepticism. If we see the troll, we see the giant man thing. Give me the action. Give me the meat. We're good. We can get past that. I, I think they could have literally been done with the doubting after the seven-minute mark where they hike, hack the iPhone. We're good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're no, good. yeah. And it, it, it persists throughout, like, at least half the story. The government conspiracy thing, too. I 
that was kind of hilarious. I kind of, <laughs> I ended up liking that. It was not only the government, but specifically the Norwegian royal family has been covering up the existence of trolls and the royal castle is actually built above the tomb of a bunch of baby trolls they massacred back in the day. When they were Christianizing Norway, they drove the trolls to extinction and they killed them all off. And uh, at one point, her dad says that all the fairy tales of trolls being like big and dumb are uh, government propaganda. And I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I love that. He says that, though, and then all the fairy tales like are true. Like after that point on. Right. She uses them like to, to formulate a game plan. Yeah, it, they never show that the troll isn't just a big, dumb rock monster. It never speaks. It is easily tricked. They plan a bunch of traps for it. It is just a big, dumb lug of a monster. So that line is kind of completely contradicted by the rest of the movie. They do suggest it's, like, capable of empathy because it saves a little kid at one point. It's having a classic showdown with helicopters and... <laughs> There's yeah, a... but like uh, monkeys are capable of empathy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he implies they're like of human intelligence. No, he does. You're right. You're right. I, my favorite scene in the movie is is that one where they rig a bunch of bells to helicopters and fly them around the troll's head while the troll is hovering over an amusement park, and they like debilitate him with the ringing of bells. Of church and bells specifically. Church, yes, thank you. Church bells specifically because Christianity. And he does destroy the helicopters and it's great. And he saves the little kid from the the fiery crash of a helicopter. But it's just very derivative, isn't it? Yeah. Like it's... everything a giant monster movie has done before this, this movie has a little bit of. You can foresee the entirety of this movie while you're watching it nothing seems special or new or subversive like you know what will happen and then it happens yeah and the scene with the church bells in the helicopter nora tiedemann like says convinces the prime minister to let her do her plan before they try to just blow it up with the military and her plan is to attach church bells to helicopter because um, that's a bit of the folklore is like the trolls hate the sound of church bells tolling and she doesn't have a plan after that. They fly around it and ring a bell at the troll and it screams in agony and like disgust and then destroys the helicopter. And then they all look on and like have these looks of devastation on their face and shock, like as if that wasn't what would happen. Like, what was the plan? ring a bell at it like did they think that would kill the troll it just made it angry and then it destroyed the helicopters and then they act shocked <laughs> it destroyed the helicopters that were antagonizing it and then they acted like it was this huge moment of like she has shamed herself she failed uh, they're taking her off the mission she's not allowed to interfere anymore and the military have complete control over it now and i love <laughs> The motivations for a lot of the characters in this movie felt like they're only motivated by the plot itself. The only reason they do something is because the plot needs them to do it. They don't actually, as characters, have any good reason to do the things they do. Yeah. One of the characters that we meet, he is this presumably higher-ranking soldier. Chris is his name. And I thought they would make him, like more of a love interest, I suppose. It, at least it seemed to me they were going that direction. Yeah, I thought Early so too. on in the film. I guess the movie kind of loses that, which is great because the actor playing Chris has, or maybe, maybe it's the character itself. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt, but this character is as likable as Cardboard. And... He's he's truly just there to be the meathead of the group. And they're all very, very skeptical of Tobias, who is Nora's father. And yet 
the military has also been sent to get Tobias for for help. Uh, Tobias is even her father. Yes. Yes. Uh, so not only is the plot a little confused, but the characters, like you said, have no real motivation outside of exactly what we are told. Right? Chris is not a a person outside of this plot. There's no underlying motivation. At least some sort of like romantic interest would have given him some human characteristic but instead he is really just a military operation goon sent here to carry it out yeah and he becomes like kind of less important too as the movie comes on he doesn't do anything he looks like a skinny young norwegian christian bale if i was to describe him yeah uh, that's a good that's a good <laughs> description but yeah he is very much a meathead and they it is norway so it is not america it's not Hollywood. I guess it's Norwegian American. But they do this thing that a lot of American mindless action movies do that's so annoying. Where, like, the military guy is, like, he's the man because he's in the military. And therefore, he's gonna help out. But <laughs> I, I don't understand. They just do a lot of pandering. It, it feels a little nationalist in a bad way in in a way that i am actually kind of shocked to see <laughs> out of a movie that's not made in the u.s i yeah exactly it's like right? i can't believe you're glorifying the military this much but you're you're norwegian i know i know i don't i did i guess it does happen in other countries i feel like it's a particularly bad thing uh that like every freaking action movie that involves the u.s military really glorifies the military have you seen like transformers <laughs> the michael bay transformers oh, yeah. movies yeah. oh my god <laughs> well and don't they also become the villain in those movies too i don't know i know one of them opens with the transformers have basically joined the military and they're like in afghanistan killing people <laughs> like Jeez. i know it's like wild but <laughs> yeah this movie does feel very oorah and i had to remind rare. myself a few times that it's not it's not american i mean i know it's norwegian american but i it's predominantly norwegian and we're led to believe that this is how the norwegian military may operate in a situation like this <laughs> i don't know these sort of movies can glorify the military pretty easily, too, because the antagonist is not another military force or another human force. It's this monster who's no one has attachment to. It's the enemy, and it's very black and white. We're the humans, yeah. we're the good guys. There's the there. It's the big evil monster. And they do try to kind of towards the end shoehorn in a, like, moral questioning but they kind of forget about that too they you know yeah, like that's true. i don't know it's it's ridiculous like uh shin godzilla of course i will compare to this movie because it's a similar story a kaiju attacks the country and the leaders of that country have to sh struggle to band together and figure out a way to stop this havoc from reaching their largest cities, you know? And, and so it's very similar setup, but Shin Godzilla does not have some oorah meatheads in it, you know? It shows the military acting on orders from the president and his cabinet and from those giving orders, and it's very... It's just so much more realistic, I guess. I don't know, this movie tries to be realistic at times and then isn't ever i feel like yeah the whole middle section of this movie sees the prime minister ordering an evacuation and we kind of we kind of get to see the inner workings of the government how they would handle this situation it also does have that like obligatory news footage from around the world <laughs> thing that all of these movies do every single one of them but then 
just then, right, when we're starting to see how the government is handling this, insert this cartoonish plot where the government is going to bomb the entire city of Oslo, and that's their solution for killing this troll. You know, to speak to your point, that it's got this identity crisis where it doesn't know if it's actually going to be rooted in realism or if the characters are just going to be actually insane and fall into these absurd circumstances. Again, I mean, I've never been presented this situation. I I don't think any world leader has had to deal with the threat of a massive troll in a city. Maybe they would bomb the whole thing. <laughs> but I don't know. I, I don't buy it. Well, okay, and then the Prime Minister also, they try to make feel like the most realistic character, but is so ridiculous. The evacuation from Oslo absolutely feels like they're only doing it so that way we can have this scene where Nora and this character we have not mentioned, but I will mention. Nora has this sidekick character who's just there as comedy relief. I think his name is Andreas. I, I think he just says he's an advisor to the prime minister, and we don't really get... He doesn't do any advising or anything at all, basically. And he just sits there and is comic relief and does nothing. He literally fills the passenger seat and doesn't do anything else. And he is not ever funny. He doesn't have any real jokes or anything. There's like... A couple moments in the writing that, like, they try to make him seem buffoonish, but, like, only a handful. Like, he doesn't do anything. He serves no purpose. I don't know why. It's, <laughs> it's agonizing. But, uh, there's a scene where him and Nora are in a truck driving away from the troll through the streets of Oslo on the highway and everything. And that's the reason they, I think guess have this plot point where they evacuate everyone from oslo but what is the logistics of that because oslo the capital of norway is by far many times over the most populous city in that country it's in the south on the coast so where did all these people go <laughs> There was one scene where they showed a line of traffic slowly moving forward that honestly didn't even feel like it was as bad as Houston during rush hour. And you're trying to tell me it was the entire population of Oslo leaving to God knows where. No, they did not evacuate. I refuse to believe it was even possible for them to evacuate. No, I thought the exact same thing. I drive in worse traffic than that emergency evacuation traffic every single day. <laughs> <laughs> I I thought it while watching it. I, I would say, maybe I'm wrong, I'm off base, but like the majority of the Norwegian population has to live in Oslo. I looked it up. It's not the majority, but it's like almost a million people live there. And then all the other yeah. major cities, it's around like 200,000 people, maybe to 300,000 oh, people. So give it, me a break. Yeah, it vastly outweighs all the other cities. And like, where would they go? Like no other place in Norway is built to house that many people and like in literally one scene overnight every single person in oslo is gone out of the city because of one troll who honestly in relation to the entire city of oslo is kind of small and probably wouldn't affect that much it was a little ridiculous <laughs> i'm i'm really glad that you didn't like this movie because I was concerned that you liked it way more than I did. No. I know we try not to tell each other how we feel about it before we record. But there was a little part of me that I was like, oh, God, I really hope Adam wasn't a fan of this one. Because that would have been two movies in a row where I've been a little more critical. <laughs> I was going to peer pressure you into liking this movie more. Maybe. Is what you were afraid of. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, um, they also do the dumb, the thing I complain about so much. It's the same thing in Van Helsing, bringing us all the way back to Van Helsing, where they make the argument of like, oh, the vampires don't turn to dust in the sunlight because it was overcast. 
the troll initially is wandering around in the daytime, so they think, okay, the story of they turn into stone during the sunlight, that's not true. Then when they find the remains of these other trolls, she very conveniently has a UV flashlight, and when she shines it on the bones, the bones turn to stone. So they determine the reason it didn't turn to stone is because it was indirect sunlight. It was overcast. It has to be direct UV light. Which, what, what is that? That is the most BS. <laughs> like, it didn't turn to stone because it was overcast. It still is sunny. Like, there still is UV light. And what do you mean by direct UV light? Like, even on a cloudless day, the light of the sun is filtered through the layers of our atmosphere. So where, where do we draw the line? Like, it, it is literally not black and white. It's a, the most gray area possible. That is like a big pet peeve of mine in films, is when they get their sunlight rules wrong. And uh, maybe that didn't bother other people as much, but that, for me, I was like, no. Well, and it is integral to trolls. I know, that's the thing with trolls. They oh. turn to stone. Of course, it's what I all trolls it. do. Yeah, I don't think that's a nitpick in this in this situation. SMH my head. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> honestly, this movie was just a pain in the ass to watch. Like, <laughs> after a while, there are so many things that make you scoff you run out of breath yeah it's a scoff of a movie it is maybe supposed to be for like maybe younger kids you know it's pg-13 which i even yeah. felt the pg-13 rating was a little strong because i agree what there's no like real violence in this movie nobody dies um there's no blood or anything uh but also it isn't really a kid's movie. And even if it was a kid's movie, just because it's a kid's movie does not mean it has to be simple, dumbed down, or bad. I think that's a bad excuse. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Roar Uthaug, off my list. Uh, I, I saw, like, I didn't, you know, I skimmed some of what he was saying about the movie. And he was talking about how he's very excited to make this movie. And, like, I can easily imagine how going from a movie like uh, like the Mummy remake. You know, I can understand why this movie, Troll, who, which takes place in Norway and is about uh, Norwegian mythology and, like, folklore, I can understand why you would be more passionate about representing your own culture on a much larger platform. So, why is this movie so bad, then? <laughs> He's a bad director, is in my mind. That's it. That's the only explanation. Yeah, no, it's... It's very, it's high gloss. You can tell it's got a decent budget. I think that the troll looks pretty neat. I think the effects are fine. They're they're serviceable, right? Like this wouldn't look bad on on the big screen. But there's a lot of issues, glaring issues in the script, glaring issues in the the direction. I don't know. I don't know why this movie couldn't be better. I don't think there's any reason it couldn't be better. It's just get a better director, I guess. I don't know. I'm sorry. Sorry to just crap all over Uthaug, but my guy, come on. Shout out to him for going back to his roots at the very least and, you know, leaving behind the million dollar franchise that Tomb Raider is and trying something else. Uh, they definitely try to establish a sequel at the end of this movie. And let's pray to God that doesn't happen. A another troll gets up out of the rubble later on in the movie and that's it i mean they, they established there is a second troll yeah in a lazy after credit scene on a netflix yeah. original so once again right. it's, it's not i don't even like why on a netflix original do you have an after credit scene it's not like this saw a theatrical release that's such a bad trend i hate after credit scenes and then it was such a lackluster one like Nobody is going to stick around. Also, the fun thing about Netflix is it starts to kick you out of the movie as soon as the credits roll, because that's how Netflix works, regardless of the movie. So you get the annoying pop-ups. You may also like X, Y, and Z while you're waiting for the post credit scene of this movie. <laughs> is that true? See, I have mine turned off. 
Oh, no, no, no. It is true. Yeah. Oh, I don't have wow. One. Okay, well, that's... Ho- it's obnoxious. Don't do post credit scene. If you have something that you want to show in the movie, show us. Don't do this dumb Avengers shawarma bit. Oh, yeah. And you know... I'm over it. Like, from 30 minutes into this movie and onward, in the back of my mind, I was thinking, they're gonna, like, throw up another troll at some point, and then be like, oh, yeah. there's another one? And, yeah, that's the end. <gasps> another troll? Who'd have thunk that there would be a second troll? Well, we gotta have a sequel now. Eh, please don't. Yeah. <laughs> that, at the end of this movie, yeah. No, yeah, it's it's bad. I'm sorry, Troll. It made me want to watch Troll Hunter, though. I do want to watch that movie. I watched oh, the movie too. so much. That movie's great. I You need your little troll fix. At least I need my troll fix, and I really didn't feel like I got it from this movie. No, I, I agree. Yeah. I, I'd rather watch Troll 2 than this movie ever again. <laughs> There's that other 90s movie called Troll. I haven't seen that one, so maybe... Maybe I'll watch that instead and get a get my troll fix. But yeah, yeah I'm, I'm I was not feeling this movie. No, me neither. Would not recommend. Really generic. Not a fan. I'm sorry, Roar. I'm sorry, Norway. You deserve better. Trolls deserved better. But there is better. Better does exist. There's Troll Hunter out there. Go watch that movie, Norway. You have a good troll movie, and be proud of it. That's right. Uh, yeah, that's everything I have to say about Me too. I've lost enough brain cells. (laughs) Yeah, too much has been wasted. (laughs) So, uh, thank you for joining me. Thank you. Of course. Uh, (laughs) thank you everybody for listening. Goodbye.